Hi there, I'm Michael Burnett, AF7KB, and this is a support video for the workbook The Fast Track to Mastering Extra Class Ham Radio Math. In this episode, we'll get to know the TI-30XS calculator. I've recommended the Texas Instruments TI-30XS in all the Fast Track Ham Radio license books, and especially for the math workbook, which gives you the precise buttons to push on the 30XS to solve each problem that can possibly be on the exam. Now, obviously, the XS is, well, it's a calculator, and I'm sure you've worked one many times before. It has your add, subtract, multiply, and divide keys, and you press enter to get your answer. No big mysteries there. In this video, we'll go over a few of the keys that are more particular to the TI-30XS. Now, of course, any good scientific calculator will work for the exam, but I do have a few reasons for choosing the 30XS. For instance, the TI-30XS lets you enter equations the way they're written in most books, so you can directly enter some long-winded thing like a multiple parallel resistor formula, and you can see that you've entered everything correctly. It has four lines of display, and if you go beyond four lines and you need to see something that's up above, it's all there and you can scroll up to it. The TI-30XS doesn't have a bunch of functions for which we have no use, but it does have everything, and then some, that we need. It's legal to use for ham exams. In fact, it is the recommended, or even required, calculator for a number of standardized exams. For your ham exam, graphing calculators and other programmable calculators are not allowed. The 30XS complies with those rules. They're widely available, and the price is right. You can usually get them at Walmart or Amazon.com for around 20 bucks. They're also durable. Let's face it, they designed the thing to survive in one of the most unimaginably horrible environments on Earth. A high school student's backpack. The operation of the TI-30XS is fairly straightforward, and in the workbook and on these videos, I'll be giving you key-by-key -key solutions for each formula. Before we get started, though, there are just a couple of settings you might want to check, or even alter, and a few keys that I want to mention. First, notice that in the upper left-hand corner of the keyboard, there's a key marked SECOND. On most TI-30XSs, it's a green key, and they come in different colors. That key shifts many of the functions on the keyboard from the function written directly on the key to the one written probably in green above the key. So, for instance, if you press the X squared key down here, the calculator will automatically square whatever the last result of a calculation was. It'll read answer squared. But, if you press the second key, then the x squared key, you'll be able to calculate a square root, and the calculator will show you a square root radical. One function you'll need for the exam is accessed by pressing second, then the zero key, followed by the two key, and that sequence resets the calculator, deleting everything in the memory. Now, the volunteer examiners are supposed to ask you to do that before the exam begins. The function is clearly marked. It says RESET above the zero key. Next to the second key is a key marked MODE. That key opens up a four-line menu of display settings. DEG RAD GRAD chooses the units in which angles are displayed. It means degrees, radians, or gradients. You want DEG for degrees, so if that isn't highlighted, use the oval cursor movement button to highlight it. Norm Psi Eng, that's normal, scientific, and engineering, chooses the form of notation in which answers are displayed. And for most purposes, you want norm. Float chooses how many decimal places are displayed in your answer. Now, that choice is up to you, but if you want to declutter your screen a little, you can choose two or three and be more than accurate enough for the exam. 
I'm not particularly attached to short numbers, so mine stays set at the default of float, which lets the calculator decide how many places to display. I think it goes up to nine. Classic math print chooses mostly how your display shows fractions. We'll be using the math print setting. It's one of the main reasons you bought that particular calculator. Press Enter to choose any item on that mode menu, and Clear to exit out of it. Next to the mode key is the Delete key. That one lets you correct any mistakes you've made entering your values without having to just nuke everything and start over. To the right of the Delete key is another important one. That's that cursor movement key. It's this oval key right here and it moves the cursor left, right, up, or down. You can use the TI-30XS to work directly in fractions, too. No need to convert the fractions to decimal form. If you count down the keyboard two keys from the mode key, you'll find the N over D key. That's the numerator over denominator key, and that's a key that lets you enter fractions directly. Since a lot of the equations for the extra exam are fractions, we'll be using that key a lot. It's also very handy if you happen to do a lot of woodworking or metalworking. You can add up 7 and 5 eighths and 3 and 7 sixteenths real quickly. Because the TI-30XS always tries to give you exact answers to problems, sometimes you'll get answers that don't seem to match anything on the exam. It'll be a fraction, a multiple of a square root, such as 2 times the square root of 2, or it'll be a multiple of pi. For instance, if we finish out that parallel resistance problem, the calculator says the solution is 600 over 11, and that is the exact answer. If you want the decimal value, which in this case is not exactly correct, but would be what was on the exam, you can press the Answer Toggle key and see that it's approximately 54.54. That's the Answer Toggle key right there underneath the plus sign. You can also add a point zero to any value you enter, and that'll force it into decimal mode when it calculates the answer. If I plug in the square root of 8, say, you can see it comes up with that 2 times the square root of 2. But if I enter it as the square root of 8.0, we get 2.82 something 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 something. Just the right of the numerator over denominator key is another key we'll use a lot. It's the times 10 to the nth power key, and that one really saves a lot of keystrokes, which means saving a lot of potential mistakes. Now, one more. Under the 3 key, you'll find a key marked with a minus sign in parentheses. That's the key you use to enter negative numbers. If you use the subtraction key for that, you'll get an error. So remember that key, because we use a lot of negative numbers on the extra exam formulas. Finally, the TI-30XS is powered by both a solar panel and a battery. I've had mine for oh, about five years now, and it's still going strong. The solar panel seems to operate it just fine in most rooms. But just be aware that the internal battery will eventually go off to battery heaven. No worries. Even if by some remote chance it happens in the middle of the exam, the solar panel will keep you going. Okay, remember to subscribe to the channel because this collection will keep growing, and if you have a moment, like our page on Facebook and visit the FastTrackHam.com website. Thanks for watching, and 7-3.